Welcome back to screencast number two in this eight-part series on Introduction to Spreadsheets. In screencast one, you learned about what a spreadsheet is and why people use them, as well as got to know your way around a spreadsheet and how to enter and format data. In this video, we'll get to the feature of spreadsheets that made them the first killer app for home computers, namely the ability to use formulas and cell references to make calculations automatically. But first, speaking of the history of spreadsheets, let's answer, answer a trivia question from the end of Screencast 1. What was the first computer spreadsheet application made for public consumption? When was it released, and what computer was it made for? Well, the answer is VisiCalc. It was first sold 30 years ago in 1979 for the Apple II computer. Many people believe that VisiCalc was the first, quote, killer app for computers, that is, a program whose existence justified the expense of buying a computer in the first place. And in 1979, computers were pretty expensive. What made VisiCalc revolutionary is exactly what we're going to talk about now, the ability to refer to cells dynamically and use their entries to make calculations automatically. So to show how we can use spreadsheets to do calculations, uh, we have here a very simple version of what a lot of households use spreadsheets for, and that's for a monthly grocery budget. Here the amount that we get each month for the grocery store is $500. And down here we formatted four data entries, uh, four trips to the grocery store, exactly one week apart each in April. Uh, I've listed the store that we go to and how much we spend each time. All this data was entered in uh, straight by hand. So we're going to make several calculations here that you know a household might really want to do. One is to total up how much money we spent on each on all these four trips to the grocery store, calculate the average amount that we spent each time we went, and also make a couple of calculations having to do with whether we are over or under budget. One of the first things I'm going to do here is actually make one quick calculation to show how calculations work. Up here, I'm going to add uh, a line here for the budget amount per week. We already have the budget amount per month, the $500, but it might be helpful to know, since I'm going to the store once a week, how much money per week I get. Well, a uh, month is usually four weeks long, so I'd like to take this 500 and just divide it by four. That would give me, I know it would give me $125, but how do I make Excel do that? To make Excel do any kind of calculation, I first click on the cell where I want the results of the calculation to go. Here, that's in B2, and I've got that clicked on already. Then I have to enter in an equal sign, and the equal sign is a flag that tells Excel that it's about to calculate something. Now what I'd like to do is take the amount that's in B1 and divide it by 4. So I'm just going to click on B1, and it enters in the cell reference, B1. Not necessarily the amount that's there, but rather the location of where that money value is. And that's very important, we'll see later. I'm going to take that and divide it by 4 and then just hit return and you see that it's 125 and it even uh, inherits the currency uh, formatting from cell B1. It has a dollar sign in two decimal places. So that's a very simple calculation. Again, if I double click on that cell I can see what I did. Equals to start the calculation. I clicked on the cell I want to refer to and then just divide by four as you would normally type into say a calculator or another computer program. I hit escape to get out of there. Now let's make a slightly more complicated calculation, and that is to total up all the uh, $4 amounts you see here. And I'm going to put that right in the cell C9. Now one way I could do this is type equals, and then just type in C5 plus C6 plus C7 plus C8. And that would work. But Excel has many, many built-in functions too, and I can just have Excel do it for me. What I want to do here is sum up some cells, so I'm just going to start typing the name of what I think the formula might be, S-U-M. I'm going to type S, and the moment I type S, I get a full list of all the formulas in Excel that begin with the letter S. And you can see there are a lot of them. Uh, square root is not it, so I'm just going to keep typing S-U-M. There it is, sum. <clears throat> I'm going to click on it to enter, and when I do, a little tooltip shows up beneath it, and, it, and what I can do is just highlight by clicking and dragging the cells that I want to sum up. So I'm going to sum uh, C5 through C8, hit enter, and there it is summed up. Now I'm going to go down here and put in the average amount that I spend each week, and I'm just going to put a label for average here, and right in this cell, in B11, I'd like to put the average of uh, cell C5 through C8 over here. Again, this is a calculation, so I'm going to click on the cell, hit equals, then I don't know what the, uh, form, what the formula that Excel uses for averages is called, but I'm just going to guess and start typing in the word average and see what I get. A, V, and right off the bat you see you get the one you want, average, 
And I'm just going to go and highlight those cells inside the parentheses there and click enter and it gives me this amount. That's the amount that I'm spending per week. So suppose I want to find out each week how much under or over budget I am on my groceries. I have $125 to work with each week and I can see that some weeks I'm under and some weeks I'm over. So let's make a little column here for over or under per week. Now in this week I'm definitely under budget. Uh, the amount that I'm under budget would be $125 minus 77. I would like under budget to come up as a negative number so I'm going to put this number which is in C5 so I'm going to instead of typing 77 just click on it to have C5 pop up here minus right now I'm going to type in 125 rather than enter in B2 and see why later so it tells me that I am $48 under budget here a negative value is good so what I would like to do is perform the same calculation three more times here in D6 again in D7 and again in D8 rather than type it in though I can do something pretty interesting I go and click on this cell, D5, move my cursor to the lower right so I see it turn from a fat plus sign into a skinny plus sign, click, hold down the mouse button, and drag. Excel will actually paste that formula into the remaining cells, and it somehow knows that instead of using $77, it is going to use whatever cell is to the left of the cell into which I'm putting the formula. This is called a relative cell reference, and it's extremely useful because what I can do is perform the same calculation over and over again on a whole column of figures just by dragging the formula down. Here you see Excel applied the X minus 125 formula, again, except this time it knows to change the cell it's referring to from C6 to C7, and here it changes from C7 to C8. I can also create another column over here that would tell me how much is remaining in my budget for the whole month. Now for that, the first column I would need to type in 500 minus this amount. Okay, I had $500 at the beginning, I spent 77 that means I've got 423 remaining. For the remaining cells, though, I would need to calculate however is much is remaining, and that's going to change. So I'm going to click on that cell to make it sort of a variable, minus the new expense, which is over here. So that difference there is my amount remaining, and I can click and drag that formula down through the rest of the cells, and it will perform that calculation. So I can see at the end of the month, I have uh, $36.87 in the hole. Now suppose I'm looking back in my spreadsheet and I realize that I just don't have enough in my monthly budget for groceries. Suppose I need $600 rather than $500. Well, if we can change that. I'll go ahead and type $600. Watch what happens to the cell below it. When I change that $500 to $600, this cell changes too automatically without me having to type anything else in. Now why is that? Well, it's because we have a cell reference in this formula here rather than just simply the number 500. This formula is always looking up to cell B1 to determine what it has to divide by 4. If you change what's in B1, the output of this formula will change too. This is a very important, very powerful feature of spreadsheets. You can see it also down here. Suppose I made an error in my entry right here and I really meant to put in $190.67. Well, I can change that to $190, but keep an eye on this cell in C9 and this cell in B11. Those are referring back to C8. When I change C8, those two formulas outputs change as well. So we can change the formula outputs just by changing the cell to which they refer. So now we know how to do calculations within a spreadsheet and use relative cell referencing to make those calculations dynamic. And we also know how to drag formulas down a column to automate repetitive calculations. In the next screencast, we're going to take a brief look at how we can apply this to problems in calculus and pre-calculus by making tables of data out of mathematical functions. See you there.